I'm Dave Spalding from All Good. I'm here today to give you a demonstration on the correct fitting procedure for our lift to lock lock case. Here's one I prepared earlier. Looks a little bit strange compared to other locks because of the different level of the two levers. The outside lever will operate the latch bolt, inside lever will operate the dead bolt when lifted as stated on the sign and when you unlock it and press down as a normal lever it operates the latch bolt. First you need to make sure that you've got all the correct components as sometimes they are not all packed together. You'll need a lock case which will be marked 7225. It will have two square followers. So it'll look like that. With it there'll be fixing instructions and the strike plate. Next you'll need the top spindle. This one is marked 9052 NT with some instructions. The spindle itself is split into two pieces. A special bracket is included which sticks onto the lock with the self adhesive pads to allow you to bolt through to this plate securing the lever. Next you need the bottom spindle 9055. This is a special spindle slotted for the group screw for the lever and at the other end it's got 5mm hole for the spindle on the indicator. Next you'll need a pair of levers that will match up to whatever else you're using on the job. You'll need an indicating device. This one is a 779Q. It includes the cover rows, sub rows and the actual indicator flag. The spindle will need cutting down later to size. Next you have the sign that goes on the inside of the door that explains that you lift the lever to lock the door. This is a 765. Next you'll need two back-to-back -back fixings. This will fix the inside bottom lever to the indicator. Next you'll need to make sure you've got all the tools required to do the job. Firstly you need screwdrivers or bits Posi drive number one and number two. Allen key 2.5mm or 3mm depending on the levers. Usually there is an Allen key supplied with the levers so that's not too important. A hacksaw or junior hacksaw to cut down the indicator spindle. A knife to open all the packaging. If you've got a quad axle kit like I have um, available from Allgood um, it does help to make the job a lot easier especially with the levers. Um, you get with it a piloted cutter. You also get a 22mm cutter for making your initial holes. You get an 8mm um, drill bit for your back to back fixings. You get a 2.5mm T handled Allen key and you also get um, a 2.5mm Allen key. You'll also need a drill bit suitable for the indicator. Um, anything from 12mm up to 20mm will su suffice. I'm using the 15mm. You need a pilot drill for piloting for wood screws. I'm using a 2.5mm. Use whatever suitable for the door surface and the size of screws. You need a punch or a pen for marking from the template. You need a pair of grips, more grips or vice or something to hold the spindle whilst cutting. You'll need a ruler, steel rule or tape measure to measure for the length of the spindle to be cut and a cordless or power drill. Next we're going to start with a pre-mortise door as this is the same process for all mortise locks. It's pointless showing you how to do that. Firstly make sure we know which side of the door is inside and which is outside. We're going to work this being the inside of the room, the bathroom or toilet in this case, and that will be the outside. Then we can transfer the relevant markings 
from the template. Okay, on the inside, fold the template over the door, line up the template with the top of your mortise, and make sure it's at the bottom. When it's in the correct position, you can tape this onto the door if it's easier for you. All we're going to mark on this inside is the fixings, but your sign at the top, two fixings, will mark the centre of the lever at the bottom, and the fixings, and that's it on the inside. This time we're going to mark the fixings and the lever hole at the top and we'll mark the fixings and the indicator hole at the bottom. Next thing to do is to drill out the lever holes with a 20 or 22 mil cutter. Um, it needs to be a 25 mil hole, so you use a 25 mil cutter unless you're using the Quadax fixing kit, the piloted cutter. Then use a 20 or 22 mil. I'm using a 22 mil. Same for the inside lever at the bottom. You can then cut the indicator hole using anything from a 12mm to a 20mm cutter. Um, I'm using a 15mm, that seems to be about right. At this point I may as well drill the clearance holes for the fixings for the indicator. Using an 8mm drill bit. Because I'm using a quadax kit, I'm not going to drill the other holes just yet. To prepare the lock, firstly, I'll remove the faceplate. Three grub screws, number two, positive drive screwdriver. Then, it's really important that you check that your latch bolt is facing the right way. The handing of the door that allows to push in when the door closes. If it's not the right way around, there's a little lever there. You push it up, the latch bolt pops out, turn the latch bolt round and pop it back in again and the little levers pop back down. Next thing you need to do is look at whether your handle is your top handle is going this side or this side. As is going on this side, so we have a little bracket, a little U-shaped bracket, which needs to be fitted into the lock, like so. To hold it in position, we've got the little sticky pads that came with it. So if we just take those off, so it can go either at the top or at the bottom, as long as it's on there, it doesn't really matter. So, push that on, there you go, the lock is now prepared and ready to fit into the door. At this point you can now fit your prepared lock into your mortise and secure it in position. We'll now finish the door clip for the top lever fits on the outside of the door. First thing we need to do is to get a piloted cutter. The reason we use this and the reason it is better is if you look in the hole you may be able to tell that a hole wasn't perfect. Working from a template you can't always be sure that you've got the holes exact. So the piloted cutter will locate 
into the follower and it will ensure that your final hole is absolutely perfect. While I'm at it, I might as well finalise the one on the other side. Next we fit the top spindle. Firstly, we orientate the handle. We can see the grub screw is horizontal. So we need the spindle with the groove horizontal, not top and bottom. Look at the spindle, we take the one with the pin at the bottom at the end and we'll place that into the follower behind the lock and push down so it locks into place. Take the other section of the spindle, push it in on top and align your two holes. You can then replace the small screw. Tighten those up nicely. That's that spindle fitted. Now with the levers you get a plastic drill jig. Looks like this. It was positioned between the two levers on the solid spindle. Um, this you now place onto the spindle with the two horizontal fixings and the third hole at the bottom. This should click into position in the 25mm hole just nicely. Because we're fixing this lever, not through the door, but into the special bracket, on the back of the lever there's a little pummel. That needs to go into a spare hole. So the hole at the bottom will be drilled to take that pummel. So, drill three holes. Each one ensuring you've got your drill on slow speed so you don't damage the actual lock case. You can then move the jig and clean up your work. It's now time to fit the top lever. The boss on the back of the lever, if you have that facing down, slide the lever onto the spindle, align the boss with the hole and push in. two screws that came with the spindle will now easily locate into the back plate that you fitted to the lock. And if you take the fixings that came with the levers in there you'll find some good screws and you just need to insert one into the lever to finalise that lever. Spindle. Here you go. Push on the cover rows. One lever done. Okay, now to fit the bottom lever. This is where most of the confusion lies with this lock. We take the 9055 spindle. Again, the groove needs to be horizontal. So from the outside of the door, Push it through the indicator hole so that it comes in to the inside and push home firmly. When this spindle is fully in place, take your drill jig as you did for the outside, do your fixing holes. Again, being careful not to do any damage to the lock, and thirdly, the hole for the pump or boss. Before we do this lever, we need to prepare the back to back fixings. If you remove the two screws from the fixing, you'll find one is quite long. One is quite short. The 
we'll take the short one and use it to actually fix the brass section to the lever rows. So if we do the same with the other side, take the long one out, there you go. You now have a lever with two brass pommels and a little boss at the bottom. So we can now insert that with the correct orientation into our door. You will need to hold the spindle in position because otherwise it will just push out. So now that's in position, ensure that your spindle is in fully tightened and fit a good screw to hold the lever onto the spindle so it doesn't move about. Next is the indicator flag, indicator flag, red and white indicator, whatever you want to call it. It comes with a converter spindle which remove it, throw it in the bin. You don't use it on this particular lock, um, it's only for use when you're using a thumb turn. Insert your spindle as far as it will go and measure from the face of the door to your flag. The outside surface of the flag in my case is 34 millimeters. So I will remove the flag, measure 34 millimeters, mark it, and then cut it using a junior hacksaw. Okay, I've now cut my spindle, and it should now make sure the flag retainer is tight. It should now fit into the hole and go flush against the door. The next thing to do is to orientate it correctly. Make sure your door is unlocked and have the silver section facing upwards as that's where we're having the hole in our indicator facing upwards. So that will show unlocked. We now need to get the two longer screws and the indicator sub rows and fix it through the door to the lever on the other side. And these are done up with a standard poly drive number two. When that's done just check the operation by lifting the inside lever and the flag turns red. Pop the cover on in the right orientation. A couple of finishing touches, one of them fitting the face plate, which I'll do now. Remove the protective cover. You can do that after if you wish. I find it easier to do before. Always better to throw the lock when you fit a, a face plate. Not only does it hold it for you, but it also makes sure that it's aligned correctly. On this particular lock, please note that one of the screws is a little bit shorter and that should go in the middle. You'll know if you've got the wrong screw because it'll just pull the latch bolt in a little bit. Okay. Okay, to fit the sign on the inside of the door, previously marked holes from the template, I just pilot them with a two and a half mil drill and fix the inner rows. Push on the cover, making sure that the writing is level. That should now leave you with the finished item. The outside lever will pull back the latch bolt. The inside lever, if you lift it, it will throw the deadlock. Push it back down, it pulls the deadlock back in. 
push it further, it will pull back the latch bolt to allow you to escape from the room. The indicator on the outside, when you lift and lock the inside, will turn red. That means that the outside lever can pull back the latch, but not the deadlock. Operating inside, pause back the deadlock. That's it. Thank you for watching.